Well, the most important thing for the clinician is to get it right, to make sure that the empiric antibiotics that are chosen will cover the infecting organism. There are many studies that show that if you get the antibiotics wrong initially, patients have a higher likelihood of doing poorly, either dying or having a prolonged course. So that's challenging because clinicians are always walking the tightrope of trying to give the appropriate antibiotics, but not trying to give an excessive number of antibiotics because of the risks of giving too much antibiotics. So deciding upon the appropriate initial empiric antibiotics, trying to get the right antibiotics in, but not give too many antibiotics, is difficult because patients are very heterogeneous and have different risk factors for drug-resistant infection. And even with the guidelines, it's difficult to always get that right. And that's for several reasons. One is there are great differences in the frequency of multi-drug resistant organisms from hospital to hospital, country to country, and even from patient to patient in the same hospital. Now we have risk factors that have been identified to help guide us as to which patients are more likely to have drug resistant organisms, such as prior exposure to antibiotics, prior exposure to uh, hospitalization, but even those, we don't have really good data to show us how useful those are. That will that'll vary between the uh, European guidelines and the uh, American guidelines, the IDSA ATS guidelines. So for the purposes of severity of illness, so how sick the patients were, uh, the American guidelines assume that all patients in the ICU are sick and we really didn't concentrate too much on defining severity of illness. Whereas the Europeans um, really uh, looked at that, although they did not make any specific recommendations on that, they did give some guidance and they suggested that in general, more severely ill patients, there's a higher risk to the patient if the antibiotics are, are chosen uh, wrongly, so that if the initial antibiotics are ineffective, in a more sicker patient, there's higher risk of harm. So they looked at patients who were, uh, had a higher risk of mortality uh, and they defined it as 15% or more and, and said those patients you need to be extra careful to make sure you're covering uh, broadly to cover the likely organisms. So they're pretty similar between both guidelines. Uh, basically both guidelines suggested double gram negative coverage and probably coverage for MRSA. Now, there are occasional exceptions in patients and um, units or settings where there's very low risk of multi-drug resistant organisms, but for most settings, that was what was recommended. That's a really good question because, to our surprise, that became one of the more controversial issues in our guidelines. The data strongly suggests that patients uh, do well with seven days of treatment, unless they're not improving. So you always have to look at the patient, and if you have a patient who's improving slowly and is still sick on day five or six, then of course you're gonna recommend a longer course of treatment. But for most patients, seven days is adequate. The reason why that became controversial is that in one study, there was a suggestion that patients infected with non-fermenting gram-negative rods, the most common of which is Pseudomonas, had a higher rate of recurrence of pneumonia when they were only treated for seven days. Now, when you look at those data, it seems likely that that is not really the case. And the reason is, is because patients who got short course therapy, when looked at at 28 days, had 21 days during which they could have a recurrent pneumonia, whereas patients who got two weeks of therapy only had 14 days during which they could recur. So they were at higher, they were at a risk for a longer period of time if they got short course therapy. When you look and see how many patients recurred per day at risk, it was actually very similar between short course or longer course therapy. And in addition, the patients infected with those organisms with short course therapy did just as well. Their mortality, their ventilator days, their ICU days was similar to long course. So it doesn't seem that those recurrences were clinically significant. So based on that, we recommended short course therapy for all organisms. Again, exceptions if the patient isn't doing well.
Uh, the Europeans, um, in their guidelines, said pretty much the same thing, although they gave specific categories of types of patients that might recover slowly. We just sort of made it more generic. And they were a little more cautious about the non-fermenters, such as Pseudomonas, in terms of recommending only short course therapy. Well, the main limitations are the, what we just discussed, which is that we're creating guidelines that are supposed to be applicable as much as possible to broad areas, you know, whole countries or continents. And we know there's a tremendous amount of variation in risk factors for multi-drug resistant organisms, uh, like I said, from hospital to hospital and from patient to patient. So it's very challenging to come up with guidelines that are specific enough to help clinicians decide what antibiotics to use, yet broad enough that they're not going to send physicians down the wrong path.